In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome to St Mary's Basilica in Sydney, whether physically or virtually, for the solemn Mass of the 30th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Happily, there has been some minor easing of restrictions on churches and worship of late, bringing them into line with similar venues and activities. This has helped mega churches and cathedrals, but more than 95% of churches remain restricted to fewer than 100 because of the four square metre rule. We give thanks to God for the low rates of transmission of COVID-19 at this time in our city and state and country. And pray for those who are dying, sick or at risk in Europe, Britain, America and elsewhere. I'm pleased today to welcome several adult candidates for confirmation. I acknowledge also their pastors, catechists, sponsors, families and friends, whether here or joining us by live streaming. A very warm welcome to you all. Conscious of the call of our baptism and confirmation to be saints for our times, we first repent of our sins. Lord Jesus, you have revealed yourself as the way to the Father Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. You have poured out on your people the spirit of truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the good shepherd leading us to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, tell the sons of Israel this, you must not molest the stranger or oppress him, for you lived as strangers in the land of Egypt. You must not be harsh with the widow or with the orphan. If you are harsh with them, they will surely cry out to me, and be sure I shall hear their cry. My anger will flare, and I shall kill you with the sword. Your own wives will be widows, your own children orphans. If you lend money to any of my people, to any poor man among you, you must not play the Yoshua with him. You must not demand interest from him. If you take another's cloak as a pledge, you must give it back to him before sunset. It is all the covering he has. It is the cloak he wraps his body in. What else would he sleep in? If he cries to me, I will listen for I am full of pity. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. You observed the sort of life we lived when we were with you, which was for your instruction, and you were led to become imitators of us and of the Lord. And it was with the joy of the Holy Spirit that you took to the gospel in spite of the great opposition all around you. This has made you the great example to all believers in Macedonia and Achaia, since it was from you that the word of the Lord started to spread. 
and not only throughout Macedonia and Achaia. For the news of your faith in God has spread everywhere. We do not need to tell other people about it. Other people tell us how we started the work among you, how you broke with idolatry when you were converted to God and became servants of the real living God, and how you are now waiting for Jesus, his son, whom he raised from the dead, to come from heaven to save us from the retribution which is coming. The word of the Lord. be with you. And your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. You, When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they got together and to disconcert him, one of them put a question, Master, which is the greatest commandment of the law? Jesus said, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second resembles it. You must love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang the whole law and the prophets also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let those to be confirmed today please stand up. Your Grace, we present these candidates for the Sacrament of Confirmation. Those responsible for their formation testify that they have been prepared and are ready to receive the Sacrament of Confirmation. 
we request that you confer on these candidates the sacrament of confirmation. It is with great joy that I receive these candidates for confirmation and will give them the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. The first live TV show broadcast globally by satellite was Our World in 1967. In it, artists such as Maria Callas and Pablo Picasso performed for an estimated 400 million people. The British contribution was written by John Lennon and performed by the Beatles. All You Need Is Love was then included in the Beatles' Magical Mystery Tour and their animated film, Yellow Submarine. It's one of the first pop songs I remember, which certainly ages me. But fear not, I haven't brought my guitar with me this morning. When people hear our Lord's teaching that loving God and neighbour is the greatest commandment, they might think Jesus was a sort of proto-hippie. After all, he was countercultural, into peace, talked universal love, had long hair and a beard, and all that's missing is the guitar. However, there's a lot more going on in our gospel this morning than the utopianism of the 67 Summer of Love, which was big on intimacy and good feelings, but rather vague on the details of the good life. After seeing the chorus of All You Need Is Love many times, some probably thought there was nothing more to be said. Love is, after all, impassioned, impulsive, even chaotic. Today, Jesus takes two commandments from two different Old Testament books, knits them together as one, and promotes them to top commandment. Yet he maintains that there's a certain order between them. Loving God comes first, then loving self, and loving neighbour comes third, or a close equal second. St Thomas Aquinas took this further asking why we should love in this order, whether we should prefer those closest to us or those who are best, whether we should love our children or our parents more, whether the order of charity endures in the afterlife, and so on. Not all loves are equal then. Some have priority, at least in some circumstances. Some are less worthy, over sentimentalized, controlling. All of which means there is some logic to love, after all. Some order amidst the emotional chaos. It might sound rather mathematical, even autistic, 
to attempt to bring order into the madness of love. But at the heart of Jesus' teaching was a second affective truth. We love God first and foremost because he is the why of everything else. He is the why of the lover, of the beloved, of the love between them. When his love inspires ours, it leads us to love ourselves in all humility and our fellows also. We care even for the stranger. And we rightly consider some our intimates, our nearest and dearest. Someone who says she loves everyone equally does indeed love everyone equally because she loves no one. Love includes preference. And if people in pandemics think loving health comes before everything else, or that loving the economy comes next, Jesus has news for them. There are some things that matter as much or even more. Thirdly, attending closely to today's text, we notice that loving God doesn't just come first. It demands all our heart and all our soul and all our mind. So it's not just about feelings like hippie love was. Important as feelings are, we must be sure to love the right persons or things in the right ways. Godly love draws the whole person, intellect and will, emotions and beliefs. To others, we give our most or our much, but to God, we give our all. And then, paradoxically, having given God all our love, our heart is enlarged to love many others and better and more. When people hear today's gospel, most miss what Jesus says after he gives the double commandment. But here lies a fourth takeaway for today. On these two commandments hang the whole law and the prophets also, he says. Once love is our fundamental option, our strategic plan, our guiding paradigm, step two is nutting out with all our heart and soul and mind the consequences for daily life. The love commandment doesn't render scripture and tradition or law and prophecy null and void. Rather, love inspires, informs, interprets and applies them. What the hippie love of the Beatles missed is that big things like faith, hope and love need little everyday expressions. So we need guidance for doing love amidst the complexities of life about the logic of loving big and well in the little things. So, there's an order of loving, and God comes first, then ourselves and our fellows, and this affects the whole person, the whole of life, and must be expressed in deeds. 
Our other readings today give us some pointers to what sort of deeds. No violence, exploitation, prejudice. God says to Moses today, you are fratelli tutti, all sisters and brothers, all in this together. So care for the widow and the orphan, the poor and the vulnerable, the voiceless and disappeared. Our love, our voices should make them seen and heard, make them the neighbours we love as ourselves. Throughout the Bible, God praises those who hear the cries of the poor and the demands of righteousness and deplores those who do not. When we love with heart and soul and mind the right things in the right order, we can do so much that is good for the voiceless and for others. Once we have those things straight, we can indeed sing with our lives, all you need is love. Bishop Thomas Muldoon slapped my face once. He was holding this very crozier at the time. In those days, after calling down the Holy Spirit and anointing us with chrism, the bishop would give us a good smack, especially the cheekiest looking boys. It was redolent of the military gesture whereby a newly minted knight was given his accolade, slapped by one of the other knights or all of them together. Well, fear not, dear candidates, for confirmation. I will be gentle. Yet you are called today, in an important sense, to become soldiers for Christ. Not so you can coerce people into joining him. For Christians, the battle is more often an internal one the struggle with our own personalities, weaknesses, vanities and temptations. Whether the spiritual battles are within or without, Christian maturity is not for the faint-hearted. It takes toughness to keep loving when the loving is hard, to be faithful when infidelity is tempting, to be hopeful when our weakness inclines us to despondency. The enduring love that founds all the stages of the Beatitudes, that serves with fidelity through thick and thin, this is the chivalry our world needs and Christ commissions in you today. If you are ready for such a mission, stand up now to profess your faith before this assembly. And since this is a Sunday and the renewal of baptismal promises takes the place of our creed, I'd invite all of you to stand and join them in renewing 
the baptismal promises you made or that were made for you all those years ago. And so to our confirmandi and to all of you I ask, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today, through the sacrament of confirmation, is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost? Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. I invite all, all of you to sit down except those being confirmed. Those to be confirmed remain standing. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God the Almighty Father for these, his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts and through his anointing conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these your servants to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin. Send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety, Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Michael, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Mary, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you.
Jerome, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Vincent to Paul, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Mary MacKillop, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Andrew, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Yes. What name? Sorry. Therese of Lisieux, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Agatha, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Claire, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Elizabeth, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Cecilia, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Lucy, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Antoine, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Anthony, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Now we both have the same name, yeah? Yeah. I'm Anthony and you're Anthony. So I pray for you. You pray for me? Yes. God bless you always. (laughs) Joseph, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Congratulations. Yes, you always. Joanne. Joanne, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Pedro, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
Peace be with you. Claire, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And be with your spirit. Congratulations. God bless you always. Mm -hmm. yeah. Teresa, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Agatha, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Gertrude, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Please stand. My dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly pray to God the Almighty Father and be of one mind in our prayer, just as faith, hope and charity which proceed from his Holy Spirit are one. For these his servants, whom the gift of the Holy Spirit has confirmed, that planted in faith and grounded in love, they may bear witness to Christ the Lord by their way of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For their parents and sponsors, that by word and example, they may continue to encourage those whom they have sponsored in the faith to follow in the footsteps of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the Holy Church of God, together with Francis our Pope, Anthony our Bishop, and all the bishops that gathered by the Holy Spirit, the Church may grow and increase in unity of faith and love until the coming of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole world, that all people who have one Maker and Father, may acknowledge one another as brothers and sisters without discrimination of race or nation, and with sincere hearts seek the kingdom of God, which is peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who have not yet accepted the gift of faith, that responding to the call of Christ, they will love the Lord God with all their heart, 
mind and soul and love their neighbours as themselves. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the joy and peace of the faithful departed, especially those we remember at this Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask Our Lady, help of Christians and health of the sick, to pray especially with us at this time for those parts of the world where the coronavirus is doing so much harm. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary Mother, Mother of God, God pray, pray for us sinners, sinners now, now and at the hour of our death. death. Amen. O God, who gave the Holy Spirit to your apostles and willed that through them and their successors the same Spirit be handed on to the rest of the faithful, listen favourably to our prayer and grant that your divine grace, which was at work when the Gospel was first proclaimed, may now spread through the hearts of those who believe in you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We give to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal history. And so, with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are holy indeed, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. 
For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which shall be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, Terry and Richard, my assistant bishops, the order of bishops or the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Remember also, Lord, your servants, reborn in baptism, whom you have been pleased to confirm by bestowing the Holy Spirit. And in your mercy, keep safe in them your grace. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you, at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, as it is. Sister, our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Because current circumstances continue to impede attendance at Mass and reception of Holy Communion, I invite those of you joining us through live streaming to ask God now that by the grace of spiritual communion, you may receive all you would in sacramental communion. Offer this Mass and your hunger for the Eucharist, for your loved ones, yourselves, and for all the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth. Through Christ our Lord. Today, our brothers and sisters were confirmed as temples of the Holy Spirit, soldiers for Christ, missionary disciples, Christian lovers, servants of the living God. To you newly confirmed, I say, resolve now to keep alive the grace you have received. By regular prayer and sacrament, especially Sunday Mass and Confession, by spiritual and corporal works of mercy, and by sharing your faith with others. To our sponsors, relatives, friends, and fellow parishioners, I say, you are now charged with supporting them in their new Christian maturity and mission. Help them apply the gifts of the Holy Spirit in lives of Christian faith and practice, of virtue and holiness, of the worship of God and love. For all. To Father Michael and Father Jared, to pastors of ones being confirmed today, thank you for your concelebration. And to all who took part in their preparation and this celebration, my thanks. And now, on behalf of you all, to the newly confirmed, our warm congratulations. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May God the Father Almighty bless you, whom he has made his adopted sons and daughters, reborn from water and the Holy Spirit, and may he keep you worthy of his fatherly love. Amen. May his only begotten Son, who promised that the Spirit of Truth would abide in his church, bless you and confirm you by his power in the confession of the true faith. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, who kindles the fire of charity in the hearts of disciples, bless you and lead you blameless and gathered as one into the joy of the kingdom of God. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth the masses and thanks be to God.